Hey, what is going on, YouTubers? Jay here from Maji and Jay. Today, coming with another Chinese phone review, and I'm talking about the Ulephone Power 6. This can be found on Amazon with the Prime service, but as you guys know, I usually keep my reviews positive, of course, mentioning all the negatives about a device. But now, this is just one of those phones that simply does not work as advertised, and I am quite surprised to be honest with you because Ulephone. I've been a fan of them for a very long time. They come with very good devices. Normally they have very good software optimization. Uh, the cameras are very decent. But now with the Power 6, something happened and you guys are about to find out. So anyways, getting a look here at the box. Well, it looks very simplistic, very clean. I do like the Power 6 logo right here. On the back side, well, we can find already some of the specifications. It has a water drop screen. Um, it has a size of 6.3 inches, Full HD, 2340 by 1080 with 402 PPI. So on paper, the screen is actually not that bad. It is an LCD panel. It comes with a 6,350 million battery. And the processor is the Helio P35. And just to give you a hint, I think that's where the problem starts. This is my first device with this particular processor and I gotta say I am not impressed. So it has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, it has a decent 16 megapixel sensor camera, again on paper, and on the back we have dual camera setup, a 16 and a 2 megapixel sensor, the 2 megapixel is for bokeh effects, and it has face recognition, fingerprint unlock, OTG function where you can connect things like mice, uh, keyboards and other accessories and finally it comes with Android Pie 9.0 so like I said before for $200 on paper it doesn't sound that bad so getting a look inside of the box here we have well the Ulephone and like I said it comes very well presented the box inside here we can already see the SIM ejector tool it has a fast brick but before that we get a screen protector the warranty card how to charge your phone, uh, you know, just to follow all the precautions of fast charging and whatnot. And here we have the fast brick. And I already removed the USB cable, to be honest, and I couldn't find it, unfortunately. But anyways, it comes with a USB Type C uh, wire as well. And here we have the fast charging brick, and these are the specifications of it. So that's all we get inside of the box. Let's go ahead and set all this aside and talk about the Ulephone Power 6. So at first glance, everything looks to be quite normal with this device, including here a very nice case that came included with it. If we remove the case on the back here, well, we got that a dual camera setup that I mentioned before. We have the LED flash right there, the fingerprint scanner, and you guys can't deny the fact that the color looks very appealing. Here we have the sticker with the IMEI information. It is a dual SIM, dual standby device, as it is mentioned right here, and you can also upgrade the memory, which is a plus for this device. And like I said before, it is running Android 9.0 it has NFC and a super big battery and I will say that is as advertised it is a 6350 million battery and impressively I was able to get two days of full usage using it as my primary phone which is quite impressive so on the right side here we have the power key the volume rocker is up and down and as you guys can see the power key has a different color tone very similar to what we saw with uh, Xiaomi devices and on the bottom here we have a single loudspeaker with a USB Type-C port. We get here the main microphone and on the left hand side of the device here we have the SIM tray. Again dual SIM, dual standby like I said before. And on top here we have absolutely nothing so it is missing the headphone jack already. So on the front here we have the 6.3 inch display and you guys will see the water notch right here on the top. This is the 16 megapixel selfie camera with the ear speaker and here we have the boot animation so like i said so far everything seems normal now talking here about the processor in which i already mentioned it it is the helio p35 also known as the mtk 67 65 and i think it is a complete disaster by mediatek this device it is unfortunately not performing as advertised and in case you guys didn't know uh, mayi or didn't see a bigger picture of her well that's mayi right there the love of my life so anyways let's get back into business here so you guys can see that I have my at t sim card connected on here let me unlock the device and I already have my face um, 
uh, detected on here my face has been registered into the device for face recognition unlocked and it does work as advertised let's go ahead and try it out so if we get here into the lock screen and I point it at me it will unlock as you guys can tell and I have the camera in front of me so that feature seems to be working quite nicely let me do that again there we go the fingerprint scanner after uh, registering about three times I was able to get it to work moderately but it does miss it quite a bunch and if you guys haven't noticed there is a big lag and here you guys can see that it failed like three times so already the fingerprint scanner is not the greatest as a matter of fact is more towards the poor side and here is when everything starts to go downhill so the screen as you can tell the colors look pretty nice for the most part it is an LCD panel as I said before 1080p resolution but the phone stutters a lot and that's my main complaint about this device and that's why I think this is one of the worst so far in 2019 according to the software so if you guys notice this just look at that lag I mean it is hard to see it or maybe even notice it here through the camera but the lag is absolutely crazy and when I did the Antutu benchmark for this device here it gave it a score of only about 80,000 that's totally unacceptable even this application struggles to open as you can see I have uh, you know even other mid-range devices around the $300 mark that open way faster and perform 10 times better than this particular device so look at that score guys 85,000 definitely not acceptable and I'm not sure why but here when I go into the my device information the CPU is showing as Snapdragon 855 so I really don't understand what happened there when this is the Helio P35 and the GPU is showing as the Adreno 640 but then everything else is about uh, correct we can see there the screen resolution 2340 by 1080 uh, the memory is correct all the other information except for the processor is not correct and actually it is 394 ppi so I do apologize for that I believe this is a 10 point multi-touch let's test it and no it is a 5 point multi-touch so that makes a little bit of a difference there but yes there we have it for the score of the Antutu and I believe I also perform the Geekbench 4 let's go ahead and check it out here real quick um, and there you go you guys can see that even trying to open this application it did stutter a bit so let's go into history this is the testing 911 for the single core and 3839 for the multi-core again this is definitely towards the poor side now like I said before the phone has you know decent features like it comes with NFC already which is nice uh, we can customize the toggles as well uh, here we have cool features like uh, not only face unlock and um, the fingerprint but we also get here gesture motion so yes this is something that has been on these uh, Chinese phones for quite a while and you can uh, customize it so here we have the wrist wake up screen so basically if you have your device turned off like this and you raise it it turns on by itself but again even that lags you saw the face recognition lagged as well so when it comes to software performance this thing is doing quite bad so keeping the software problem aside another issue about the power 6 has to do with the camera the camera has been advertised to have electronic game stabilization as a matter of fact if we go here into video we go into settings we can see it right there I have it turned on and when I went out there in the field as I was working I recorded it and you guys can see that it doesn't have electronic game stabilization or at least it doesn't appear to have it based on this quality also the focus did very bad I had to tap on the screen several times in order to get a little decent focus and the colors were not accurate at all so I will have to say this is one of the worst cameras that I've seen so far in 2019 so now here when it comes to the front facing camera well it does okay but my colors are not accurate either um, it does record in 1080p but again I look like I have a blue tint over my skin and it doesn't look correct whatsoever so yes the front facing camera it is also a big flaw here for the power 6 and just to finish it off guys the call quality it is super bad the speakers on the power 6 are super super bad they sound flat they don't sound rich whatsoever 
uh, especially on the loudspeaker side and even on the ear speaker if you guys let's say are in traffic or you have your window rolled down whatever the case may be where there's environmental noises you're gonna have a hard time listening to phone calls so at least here I'm gonna test the loudspeaker so that way you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about and again guys I don't have anything against Ulephone I keep repeating it throughout the video I really like this brand but for some reason they failed dramatically with the Power 6 and if you guys really look into reviews about this particular device you will notice that I'm actually correct so let's go here into my library let's go here into my videos and you can see that even this is getting delayed let's play here the latest one about the Oppo Reno Z and let's listen to the quality display 6.4 inches it has uh, three cameras you have two in the back a 48 megapixel main shooter uh, 2.0 aperture and uh, it is made by Sony it is an IMX sensor as well and on the front we have the 32 megapixel selfie camera it doesn't have a pop-up camera but it is very cool and the quality is at so there as you guys can hear the quality on the loudspeaker is not great. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how this has been transmitted via this microphone, but when you guys listen to this in person, the quality of it is not great. It is not a stereo speaker. And as I said before, the ear speaker also doesn't do a good job at all. Uh, here the phone, well, this is something positive. It is supporting the LTE bands here in the USA. So like I said before, I have it connected here with at t and it does support HD voice, even though the ear speaker is really crappy, but at least the browser does work. Um, like I said, guys, this is a, it could have been a great device. Honestly, I think the main issue here is the P35 processor. That's my best guess so far. Uh, here, if we go into settings again, and we scroll all the way to the bottom here, to where it says um, system we go into uh, let's see here advanced we go here into about device where we can see all the information about the power 6 again android 9.0 uh, 4 gigs of ram it has uh, and on paper it is not a bad device whatsoever but unfortunately this company didn't optimize it correctly but this being said guys, I think that now I have completed here the unboxing and basically everything you guys need to know about the Power 6. I don't think it deserves an in-depth review as the phone is not performing great and this is my first disappointment of 2019 and it's actually my first disappointment with the Eula phone. Hopefully with the Power 7, they can make things a little bit better and come with a better processor and better optimization. Let me know what you guys think about the Eula phone. Will they fix this or will they just keep going downhill? Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video, and I'll see you guys on my next one.